tulips, canals, clocks, bikes, amongst other things. But food? What do you think about the Dutch cuisine? <laughs> This is delicious. Unlike our neighbors, Italy and France, no one comes all the way to the Netherlands just to eat. So how do you know what to eat when you visit Amsterdam and the Netherlands? Hello and welcome to our channel. We're Rachel and Alexandra from Who is Amsterdam? And we are your Amsterdam travel guides who help you explore Amsterdam beyond the typical. And today, it's all about food. We'll tell you what you need to eat, but next to that, we'll also share why you need to eat them. So get ready for some fun food facts that will make you go, wow. Let's dig in. Let's talk about the original Oreo. Drop waffles. So this darling cookie was invented by a Dutch baker from Gouda. Yes, like the cheese. All the way back in the 1600s. He had a lot of leftover cookie dough, bread dough, and he decided to combine all of them together to fight food waste. So he made a waffle out of it. When he took a bite, he thought, ah, it wasn't sweet enough. So he decided to make something sweet to sweeten it up. And there we go. We have the stroke waffle, which is now world famous. You can find it everywhere everywhere from the USA like Trader Joe's but the best way to enjoy it is definitely to get it fresh and warm from the market stall anywhere in the Netherlands. So what is actually a stroke waffle? It's a spice dough turned into a waffle, sliced in half, smeared with a sweet sticky filling and sandwich and voila! But here's where a lot of people get it wrong. This thin, cookie, crisp, caramel, wafery thing make the caramel filling. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This is Alex from the most famous stroke waffle stall in the Netherlands. Let's hear it from the expert. It's a waffle filled with syrup. We call it stroke. Yep. It's syrup, not caramel. It's a beautiful mix of different kinds of spices, sugars, and also butter. Now you know. Over here, we enjoy it over a cup of coffee or tea. Let it heat up and let the syrup melt a little and enjoy. Some people love it, some people fear it. But to the Dutch, this humble herring is a symbol of national pride and the main reason why the Dutch were able to scale up their business and become one of the richest countries in Europe. We even have a saying that Amsterdam is built on herring bones. Why is that you ask? Because the Dutch made huge profits from trading herring after a fisherman from the 1300s, Willem, invented a way to preserve this fine fish and the profits were used to build many beautiful canal houses that you see in Amsterdam today. So today, herring is still big business. Guess how much Dutchies spend a year on herring? 150 million euro. Yeah. Big business. And if you didn't know, herring is only caught once a year. The new batch of herring is called Hollandse Nieuwe. And the very first barrel of herring is always auctioned off by our king for charity. And the most expensive barrel so far was sold for 95,500 euros in 2019. So in recent news, Dutchies were even rewarded herring as a vaccination incentive. So how do you eat this beautiful fish? So all over the Netherlands, you can find fish stalls selling herring like this. There's no head, there are no guts either. It's actually a whole fish that's been cleaned out and this is how you eat it. Pick it up by the tail. do it all over the Netherlands. However, in Amsterdam, Amsterdam has always its own rules. We do it differently. We do it like this. We slice uh, the herring in pieces. We have some pickles, some onions. Take a piece of the herring, you dip it in your onions and you take a pickle. Yes, there we go. No matter how you choose to eat it, guys, remember, this is one Dutch food you gotta try. Mm. Almost every culture has its own version of a pancake. Dutch pancakes, however, aka panakuka, are world famous. That's hot. When I'm in Holland, I eat the panakuka. Ah, yeah, you, you should. should. Thin, crepe-like, and we eat them with strope. Remember, syrup, and any topping you can think of, really. No, the Dutch did not invent the concept of pancakes, but they've been eating pancakes for a very, very long time. However, according to food historian Ken Albala, modern pancakes as we know it may have come from the Dutch. 
So here we eat pancakes for breakfast, lunch and dinner. So think of it as an all day breakfast. By the way, if you like this video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and also hit that notification bell for more awesome Amsterdam content from us. Let's continue. Another popular so-called Dutch dish is Dutch baby. But the real Dutch baby is puffature. Puffature means little puff. And the reason why they puff up when they cook is because of the yeast in the buckwheat mix. Nothing beats seeing them bubble up before your very eyes at market stands and you get to catch the flipping action. So many flavors to choose from, but traditionally you have a cold slab of butter, generous amount of icing sugar, and just look at this. You can never have too much butter. They put on french fries in Holland instead of ketchup or what? Mayonnaise? Yes, Mr. Travolta. It's true. We eat a lot of fries with mayonnaise here. Actually, it's so popular, we don't even need to say it. We just simply say professional mac. Fries with. With what? With. Think of it as a password at a speakeasy. You don't even need to say it. Okay, it's true. Fries are originally from Belgium. But here's something that we have that Belgians don't. Patatia Olog, aka war fries. Thick Indonesian peanut sauce, creamy mayonnaise, and yes, raw chopped onions. Why war? Because it's messy AF. So this is one Dutch essential you definitely need to try. Okay, so next time you get a patatje mat, add some peanut sauce and onions to it. That's the way to go Dutch. Mm, yeah. Whenever you have a drink together with your friends or after work with your colleagues, you order some cold beers and as a mm. snack, you typically order bitterballe. Amongst other fried food, bitterballe means bitter balls. But trust us, it tastes a lot better than it sounds. So what the heck is a bitterballe? The bitterballe are these fried dough thingies that are stuffed with meat. Nope, it's not. It's... Fried ragu, you know, like gravy. It's made of butter, flour, stock, and other ingredients like beef. Something else you want to try, which is similar, is the croquette. It's actually bitter ballet in a cube, and we eat it more for lunch in a broodje, which means bun. But back to bitter ballet. The big question remains, why is it called a bitter baller? You ready for this? It's because it's a ball that goes with the bitters of your drink. That's why it is a bar snack. It's meant for drinking. And those, my friends, are six of the Dutch essential foods you need to try whenever you visit Amsterdam. And when you do, we want to help you to make your life easier. This is why we created a self-guided food tour, which brings you to six family-owned businesses where you can try some of the best Dutch food we were just talking about. If you want a guided food tour, then look no further than the Hungry Bird Street Food Tours. They've been feeding travelers for nine years now and they're the most complete and personal food tour in Amsterdam. So don't miss that and you can find the links to both of the tours as well as a free downloadable 24 hour Amsterdam itinerary down below. Thank you for watching this video. We Rachel and Alexandra from Who is Amsterdam and we see you in our next video. You take it up by the tail. You kind of like do this and then you take a bite. Mmm. Like her? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs>